الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبيه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Today I want to mention the dua of two angels. So this talk today is going to be based around the dua of two angels. Now one of the first things is that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said in a hadith collected by Imam Bukhari, "Man sama Ramadan, iman wa hisab ghufir lahu ma taqaddam min dhanbi." Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan out of iman and ihtisab, then you will have all of your sins forgiven. You will have all of your previous sins forgiven. And now we're coming towards the end of the month of Ramadan. Now for us, we fast the month of Ramadan because it's an obligation, but also because we want the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We've been fasting maybe 15, 16, 17 hours plus in the summer, in the hot days. People are at work, people have had exams. So we want the reward as well from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how do we know, or what's the sign that we are on track to getting that reward? That we are on track for this hadith where the Prophet wasallam said that we will have all of our previous sins forgiven. Because in anything in life, there are signs. So anything in life. So let's take, um, if you want to pass your driving test, then the sign is that you're ready to pass your test, is that your instructor says that you've completed all your maneuvers and so on and so forth. Or if somebody asks you if your child, how are they doing in school? Then the sign is maybe their school report or uh, somebody they've spoken to, one of their teachers in school. There are signs that indicate it. So what is the sign that we are achieving this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? When we look at the various ibadat, the things that we do, there's something that they have in common when it comes to the end. So for example, when we finish the khutbah, the thing we will finish with at the end is Dua asking for forgiveness. When we pray, and when we finish praying, we finish with Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. We're asking Allah for forgiveness. When people go to Hajj, you stand there and you're making Dua, you're asking Allah for forgiveness. And this is the same for Ramadan as well. This is what we need to be concentrating on during these last few days in Ramadan. This is one of the signs that the scholars mention that apply to the hadith of the Prophet wasallam. So the first dua of an angel today. The Prophet wasallam in his hadith collected by Ibn Hibban, he was going up the member in Masjid al Nabawi, in his masjid. And he said, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. So the companions, they heard this and they said, Ya Rasulullah, what are you saying Ameen to? And so the Prophet wasallam he said that Jibra'il came to me, the angel Jibra'il. And he said to me, that may the person who does not have their sins forgiven in the month of Ramadan, that he deserves to be in Jahannam. Now this is the dua of who? The dua of the angel Jibra'il. This is not an ordinary angel. Out of all of the millions of angels, this is one of, you know, one of the highest levels of angel. This is the angel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to reveal the Qur'an to it and then reveal to the Prophet wasallam. This is the angel that spoke to the Prophets. And the person saying Ameen to the dua is not an ordinary person. It's the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's not happening in an ordinary place. It's happening on the member of Masjid al-Nabawi. So why is Jibra'il making this dua? The scholars say that during this month of Ramadan, as we know, Futihat Abu Abu Sama. The gates to Jannah are open. Wa Abu Abu Jahannam. And the gates to Jahannam they are closed. And not only this was sulsilat shayateen that the shayateen they are chained up. So in this month, when the gates of Jannah are open, when the gates of Jahannam are closed, when the shayateen are closed, are, are chained up, if we cannot increase in our good deeds, if we cannot give more sadaqah in this month, if we cannot ask Allah for more forgiveness in this month, if we cannot pray more in this month, then when will we pray? When will we give more charity? When will we make more dua? When will we have our sins forgiven? This is the month for having our sins forgiven. This is the month of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our sins to be forgiven. And very recently I had a question. A brother said to me, he said that, you know, I have missed a number of prayers when I was younger. In time that has gone, I missed a number of fasts as well. He said, I don't think there's any hope for me to fast these, these days of Ramadan or to continue praying. Now my brothers and sisters, Whatever we have done in our past, whatever we may have done, or whatever we may have not done, 
La taqnadu min rahmatillah. Never despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts his Quran, starts his book that he has given us. Over 9,000 lines. 9,000 lines in the Quran. What's the first line that he started this entire book with? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. That Allah is the most merciful. Allah starts the book by telling us about His mercy, about His rahmah, about how He is towards us. So no matter what we have done in the past, this life it is maybe like a race. Say when you have a sprinter that's doing a hundred meter race. You might have a bad start, but you can still win the race at the end. You can still get a medal at the end. You don't get a medal for starting well. It's how you finish. And maybe we may have made mistakes in the past. It just means we need to do more. It means we need to increase in these last few days. Whatever we have done in Ramadan, in this last week that is left, we need to do more. Whatever dua you have made, you need to make more dua. Whatever sadaqah you have given, you need to give more sadaqah. Because this is how we will get this hadith, the reward of the hadith of having all of our previous sins forgiven that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. It's about taking that step to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in Sahih Muslim that when we take or when we give an arm span towards Allah subhanahu or a hand span towards Allah, Allah comes an arm span towards us. When we go walking to Allah, it's as if Allah comes running towards us. But we need to take those first steps. We need to take those first steps towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He mentions a verse in Surah Al Imran. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَارِئُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He links between two things. وَسَارِئُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ Allah links between seeking forgiveness and Jannah. Allah links between the two here. And this is very, very important for us. That these are the days we really need to ask Allah for forgiveness. We really need to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for the mistakes we have made. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us in the hadith class of Imam Tirmidhi, That we all make mistakes. That we are human at the end of the day. We've all made mistakes. But the best of those that make mistakes are those that turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those that ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. As Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyahu anhum, he said in his tafsir of the verse, وَهُسِّلَ مَا فِي الصُّدُورِ That on the day of judgment, our, the state of our hearts will be shown. The state of our hearts will be shown. Do we know what this means? The Prophet ﷺ told us in the Hadith Kalaq really, that every time we commit a sin, a black dot is placed on our hearts. A black dot is placed on our hearts. Now imagine the state of your heart on the Day of Judgment. Imagine coming on that day in front of your parents, in front of your spouses, your wives, your husbands, in front of your children, in front of all of mankind, and you have a black heart. Imagine coming on a day like that. And the way to have these black dots removed is through asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for our sins in these last few days in particular, in this month of Ramadan. As the scholars mentioned, they give the example of the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. So Yusuf was one out of 12 brothers. Was one out of 12 brothers. He had 11 brothers and they were involved, as we know the story, of putting him into the well. Now the scholars say that just as the dua of one of them was able to forgive all the other 11 brothers. The dua of one was able to forgive all the 11 other brothers. The dua in this one month in Ramadan is enough to forgive you for the mistakes that you've made in the 11 previous months. But it's up to us to make that dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not just this, but also when it comes to forgiving, not just for turning to Allah, but also forgiving others. Also forgiving others. We hear about so many problems within families. Brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, in-laws, cousins, nieces, nephews. So many problems within families. And the Prophet ﷺ, he told us, Irhamu turhamu, have mercy on others. Waghfiru yaghfiru Allahu lakum. Forgive others for their mistakes. You know, when somebody's trying to argue with you, and maybe they're wrong, maybe you are right. You don't need to continue the argument to prove your point all the time. The Prophet ﷺ said, the person who knows that he is right but doesn't argue, he gives up the argument, he will have a house built for him in Jannah. A house built for you in Jannah just because you didn't argue. So this is how we need to be, because on the Day of Judgment, the Prophet ﷺ told us, there is a place called Qantara. 
Al-Qantara is a place where there's retribution between the creation. So not between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but between you and your fellow human beings. So imagine now that you have gone through this life. You've gone through the trial of the grave. You've gone through the trial of resurrection. You've gone through the trial of the day of judgment 50,000 years in length. You've gone through going over the Sirat, the bridge to Jahannam. And the only thing left is for you to enter into Jannah. But there's one place that is left, which is where there's retribution between people. Retribution between people. Whether you have wronged someone or somebody has wronged you. But my brothers and sisters, life is too short for this, to put your eggs in this basket. Who wants to be in that situation? And to avoid this, we need to be forgiving. We need to have that forgiving heart, just like the Prophet ﷺ had that forgiving heart. And we all know we are humans and we have made mistakes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran preserved examples for us. Preserved examples for us. Or people that were also human. Allah gave us the example of the Prophets. And just look at the Prophet Adam alayhi salam. How many mistakes did Adam alayhi salam make? How many mistakes did Adam alayhi salam make? One mistake. He made one mistake. Ibn Qudama mentions because of that one mistake that he made, he cried for how long? Ibn Qudama mentions a narration that says 200 years. 200 years because of one mistake. And the narrations even say that the angels started crying out of sadness because of the crying of Adam alayhi salam. For one mistake. Now ask ourselves, how many mistakes have we made? And when was the last time we cried when we made dua and asked Allah for forgiveness? When was the last time we cried when we made dua and asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness? And in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has even preserved for us the duas of the Prophets. And they have a common theme amongst many of the duas. The dua of Adam alayhi salam. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا Oh Allah, we have wronged ourselves, asking Allah for forgiveness. The dua of Nuh alayhi salam. رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي Oh Allah, forgive me. The dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَلِيْوَالِي لَيَّ وَلِيْلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَوْمَ لَيَكُمْ Oh Allah, forgive me and forgive all those that are amongst me. The dua of Musa alayhi salam. رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لَنَا Oh Allah, forgive us. Even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who said in the hadith, Wallahi, he said, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, La astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayhi akthar, that he said, I forg- ask Allah for forgiveness. Fil yawm, akthar min sab'ina marra. More than 70 times a day. Seven zero times a day. This is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He asked Allah for forgiveness more than 70 times a day. How many times a day do we ask Allah for forgiveness? How many times a day do we ask Allah for forgiveness? So these, this, these are the days, these are the nights that we really need to keep asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And the scholars mention, Ibn Rajab actually mentions a narration about shaitan. And the narration says that there is, or there was one ayah that was revealed in the Quran that caused shaitan to cry. Imagine this now, that shaitan is crying because of one ayah that was revealed. What was this ayah? Ibn Raja mentions that when the ayah, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاهِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهِ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ That when this verse was revealed, the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that people they make mistakes, but when they make a mistake, they remember Allah فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ So that they ask Allah for forgiveness, this is the verse that caused shaitan to cry. Why? Because Allah in this verse has given us the key of how to be successful. In this life and the akhirah. When we make a mistake, when we have made mistakes in the past, what do we do? We need to turn back to Allah. Raise your hands and keep asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. So this was the first dua of the angel Jibra'il. The second dua I'll mention is of an angel that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he described in a hadith collected by Abu Dawood, as the size of this angel, the distance between its shoulder and its earlobe is the time it would take a bird to fly 700 years. 700 years just between its shoulder and its earlobe. This angel is one of the eight angels that are holding the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Ghafir that these angels, they make dua. These eight angels, imagine, out of all of the angels Allah could have created, and Allah has created, there are eight that make a specific dua. What dua do they make? What dua do these angels make? 
Allah tells in Surah Ghafir that they ask for six things for a person. Six things for a person. They ask for that person to have their sins forgiven. They ask for that person to be saved from Jahannam. They ask for that person to be entered into Jannah. They ask for that person's parents to enter into Jannah. They ask for that, parents, that person's wives or husbands to enter into Jannah. And they ask for that person's children to be entered into Jannah. Six things from these angels. The only eight that have been created like this. Who gets this dua? Who gets this, this dua? As Allah mentioned in the verse. Those that keep asking Allah for forgiveness. So when you're asking Allah for forgiveness, these angels, if you do it constantly, are also making dua for you. And also making dua for your forgiveness. And Allah tells us, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin. Allah loves the people that turn to Him and asking for forgiveness. So much so the Prophet ﷺ told us in Sahih Muslim that if we were people that would have not sinned ever, that Allah would have changed us for people that would have sinned so that we can then turn back to Allah and ask Him for forgiveness. And if this is not enough, then one final thing we will finish with. The Prophet ﷺ told us that there will be people that will come on the Day of Judgment and they will see their sins on the side of their scales. And it will be said to them that you have done this and this and this and this. And the person, the people will say yes, they will have no answer. But to say yes, we committed all of these sins. Imagine all of these sins on the left side of their scale. And they are being asked about it and shown it and told about it. Imagine the state of that person. And then it will be said to them that all of these sins that you have ever committed, they have been changed into good deeds. All of your sins, imagine, all of your sins have been changed into good deeds. Why? These are the people who Allah changed their bad deeds into good deeds. Why? Because they asked Allah for forgiveness. Just by asking Allah for forgiveness for the sins we have committed is a means of having these sins changed into good deeds for us. So when we're waiting for Maghrib, maybe the days are long, maybe you're waiting for Maghrib. When we're at Fajr time, we're waiting for Fajr to come in, you're eating your suhoor, it's the last third of the night. Then really turn back to Allah, really ask Allah, really mean it from your heart. And really try and cry, just like the Prophet Adam salam did, really mean it. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being arham al rahimin in these days, we ask Him to accept all of our du'as. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد قال الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والله لا استغفر الله وأتوب إليه أكثر في اليوم أكثر من سبعين مرة في الحديث الذي أخرجه إمام مسلم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم إنا نسألك بكل اسم هو لك سميت بها نفسك وعلمت أحدا من خلقك أو استكثرت بها عند العلم الغيبك أن تغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصر على القوم الكافرين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين قوموا إلى صلاتكم